fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you do it is a question, and here's one that the happy people have to say. Hello, this is the Lone Ranger speaking. You know Americans have the reputation of being always on the go. You can see how we got that reputation when you think back on the exploits of men like Daniel Boone, Lewis and Clark, Davy Crockett, and many others. They had to cross the rivers, climb the mountains, break the trails from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Today, Americans are still full of energy. And the important thing to remember is that we are a wheat-eating nation. We eat more energy-giving wheat by far than any other grain. It's one big reason why we are still on the move exploring new frontiers. Keep on eating your wheat-eating and you'll be doing 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 okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? A long line of mule-drawn wagons moved slowly along the treacherous Cimarron cutoff as it headed toward the rich trading center of Santa Fe. Bob Hobart, 22, rode beside the lead wagon. He looked around at his weary, dust-covered companions, then glanced at the slim, delicate-featured girl on the wagon seat beside her father, Silas Galt. Susan Galt, clutching the hard, swaying seat with tense hands, spoke encouragingly. Cheer up, Bob. It's been a rough trip for all of us. It sure has, Susan. If you weren't man enough to take it, you shouldn't have come, Hobart. Get it. Dad, do you have to be unpleasant? It's all right, ma'am. I've got no patience with a young, healthy hombre who's scared of his own shadow. Fire. I think I'll ride up ahead a while. Get him! Get him! Get him! Susan rode in silence a few moments, then turned to her father. You hurt his feelings, Dad. I could see it in his face. If he doesn't want his feelings hurt, he better start acting like a man. When we met those two friendly engines on the trail after we left Fort Dodge, old Bart almost shook out of the saddle like he expected to be stumped. I don't want a daughter of mine getting serious with a coward like him. But, Dad, well, let's I... forget him. Get it, Dad. Get it. Bob Hobart rode alone ahead of the wagons. His knuckles showed white on his clenched fist as he tried to control the feeling of bitterness and despair that welled within him. He's right. I, I can't help being scared. I, I just can't help... He shivered involuntarily as he recalled the hardships encountered so far. To Bob, it seemed that the country itself resented the intrusion of the pioneers. And added to that was the known resentment of hordes of savages intent upon torture and death to all white men. If I could stop thinking about the Indians and about that that man we found on the trail, Scout. Oh, 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 easy now, boy. Hi, Hobart. Hi. <laughs> well, how come you riding ahead of the wagons? Aren't you afraid a red skin will suddenly uh, pop up and put an arrow through you? Slade, if you and Stacy don't mind, I think I, I'll ride back along the wagons and see how things are. Sure, go ahead. Get around there. Get him. <laughs> you sure scared him plenty when you mentioned red skin, Slade. Yeah, he got white around the gills. When things really begin to happen, he's one hombre who won't be of any use. Yeah. Hey, Slade. You came east from Santa Fe several months ago. You 
You persuaded me to go back west with you to help you run a gambling hall out there. That's right. Well, ever since we left Independence, you've been hinting about something that might happen on the way. So don't you think it's about time you told me about it? Yeah, I reckon I can trust you enough now, Stacy. You see, Silas Gall is getting to be an influential hombre out west. He even has the friendship of a powerful Apache leader named Cachis, who promised Gall's wagon trains wouldn't be molested. Well, well, up to now, a wealthy Mexican, Senor Diego, practically controls Santa Fe. He has freight lines into South Mexico. But Gulf's freight line to the east is bringing in goods that Diego can't bring up from Mexico. In fact, Gulf is a threat to Diego's business and influence. Where do you come in? Well, I know Diego well. He promised to back me in a gambling hall in Santa Fe if I find some way to stop Gulf. Well, how do you plan to do it? I made a deal with a tribe of Cheyenne Indians who attacked the wagons at the Cimarron River crossing. But, holy mackerel. What about us? If they attack, we'll... we'll clear out the night before. I figure we'll reach the Cimarron tomorrow afternoon. Smart wagon masters wait till morning to make the crossing because of the current and the treacherous Sandy Riverbed. When will the attack take place? At daybreak. Of course, the Cheyenne chief, Black Bear, and his braves will get the horses and the stuff in the wagons. But I also promised that Diego would see to it they get rifles when his next shipment comes in. Uh-huh. All right, let's ride back now and mix with the others for a while. Right. Get around, boys. Come, Come on, on right get in there. All right, get up. Get up. Get up. Late the following afternoon, the wagons reached the Cimarron and were circled for the night. Meantime, in the foothills several miles south, the Lone Ranger and Tonto sat before a council fire in the Apache stronghold of Chief Cochise. They sat in silence as the peace pipe was passed. Finally, the chieftain gently placed the long slender pipe on a blanket spread before him and spoke solemnly. Smoke of peace pipe rise straight to great spirit. It's good sign. Me, Cochise, want to be friend to all white men. Because of you, I sit in council with soldier leaders at Fort Dodge. Go, my brothers, and tell them what Cochise has spoken. We shall carry your message with happy hearts, Cochise. That's right. Wait, Matt. Yes. It's better to start journey with beginning of new day. Tonight, you rest here. Even now, the braves of Cochise wait to honor you with ceremonial dances and feasting. Wahote! Wahote! During that night, Slade and Stacy managed to leave the wagon train unnoticed. At dawn, Silas Gold and his men were busy making preparations for the river crossing. The wagons were circled about 200 yards from the riverbank. Bob Hobart was helping Silas harness the mules when Susan, who waited on the wagon seat, suddenly called out. Dad, hey. come here quickly. Hey. What's the matter, Susan? I just saw a rider, an Indian, hey. appear on the rise back there. He's gone now. An Indian? Are you sure, Susan? Yes, I... Look, now there are three of them. Uh-uh. I don't like the looks of these. Yeah. You think there'll be trouble? How do I know? Maybe they... Dad, now there are a lot of them. They're attacking. Get to your post, everybody. Get to your post. Well, taken by surprise, the men of the wagon train sprang to whatever cover they could find as the frenzied Cheyennes, leaning low on their racing ponies, quickly formed a fast-moving circle around the wagons, firing guns and shooting arrows as they rode. Bob Hobart, stunned by the sudden onslaught of yipping, painted savages, stood rooted to the spot. Hobart, you young fool, take cover, get down, and use your gun. Bob took his place beside Silas and Susan, who had left the wagon and was already helping by reloading guns. For about five minutes, the attack continued. Then, as quickly as they came, the Indians rode away and disappeared over the rise. They've gone... It's all over. Let's play a long shot. He'll be back again and again until we're done for. Dad, if we could get help. I wish we could, Susan. But someone could leave now while the Indians are behind that rise. He could cross the river and go for help. Hey, Susan, I just thought, hmm? if someone could get through to Cochise, 
This village is a few miles south of here. I'm sure most of the men would volunteer, Dad. I wouldn't ask any of them. It, well, it's one chance in a hundred that anyone would get through. Now, listen, honey. Get the eagle feathers, the three tied together that Cochise gave me. I'll settle my horse. Dad, what are you going to do? I'll try to get through myself. Dad, no. It's our uh, one hope, Susan. If we don't get help, we're done for. Susan brought the eagle feathers, and soon her father's horse was ready to ride. Yeah, uh, Susan, I don't want the others to know it'll have gone. You'll be killed, Mr. Gold. And we'll be left here without a leader to be massacred. You, you can't go. I'm gone, and nothing you say will stop me. This will stop you. Oh! I'll take those feathers. Well, goodbye, Susan. Death! Death! Wait! Come back! What happened? Hey, Hobart's right into the river. Oh, my head. Hey, Dad. Dad. Oh, Dad. Bob Hobart took the feathers. He's gone on your horse. Easy, Come on. That low down yellow back coward. He's leaving to save his own skin. Without those eagle feathers, nobody could get near the Apache village to seek a cheese. Thanks to Bob Hobart, we're as good as done for. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Silas Galt and his men were bitter in their feeling toward Bob Hobart, whom they thought had taken the one chance to escape, leaving them to their fate. Later, three miles south of the river, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail toward Fort Dodge. The colonel will be pleased to hear that for chief will have a treaty, Tonto. Ah, him plenty strong leader. He make trail safe for pioneers. Yes, I wish there were more Indian leaders like him. Ah, look, Kim Wasabi. Three Indians chase fellow on horse. Monsilver! Look, out! As the Lone Ranger and Toto opened fire and galloped toward them, the three Indians turned and rode hurriedly back over the hill. The masked man and Indian drew rein beside the rider, who was slumped in the saddle. Hold over, hold over. He got bridle a horse. The man's about to fall from the saddle, steady fella. Mom, one of their bullets. Easy, steady, Silver. We'll take care of it. Here, I'll help you from the saddle. Thanks. Uh, Quickly, the two men lifted Bob from the saddle. As they bandaged his wounded arm, Bob introduced himself and told about the attack. He finished by saying, I was going to find an Indian named Cochise. These feathers were given to Mr. Galt. They'd get me through to the Indian village. I, I must go on. I must get help. You did a very brave thing, Bob. I'm not brave, mister. I had to do it. I couldn't let Mr. Galt take the risk. And for Susan's sake, his daughter's sake, well, I just had to do it. Thanks, mister. In spite of that mask, you saved my life. I wear the mask for a purpose, Bob. Believe me, we're friends. Otto, ride with Bob to the village of Cochise and ask for his help. I'll go on and try to reach the wagon train. Hurry, there's no time to lose. Uh -huh. Easy, big fella. Adios. Montpellier! Soon, the Lone Ranger came within hearing distance of the Indian attack. Faster, big fella. Montpellier! Then, as he approached the river, he drew rein a moment and listened. Oh, oh. The sounds of the attack had stopped, and the masked man decided to risk crossing the river to join the wagon train. Come on, sir. With ready gun, the Lone Ranger rode to the river and started across. Two mounted Indians rode along the river bank behind him and started in pursuit. The masked man turned and fired. 
One of them fell. The other two, armed only with bows and arrows, turned back. Come on, sir! At the wagon train, one of the men called Silas Galt's attention to the rider on the white horse. Mr. Galt, yes. look! Coming across the river. A masked hombre on a big white horse. Yes. Hey, maybe he's an owl hoot, but the Indians are after him. They come to along this side of the river to intercept him. Use your guns! Covered by the gunfire of the pioneers, the Lone Ranger rode hurriedly into the circle of wagons. Oh, 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 reach, mister, you covered. Dad, why do you do that? The thought struck me this might be a trick. He might be into those ordinary chains. Oh, I'll not try to explain my mask now. But perhaps these feathers given me by Cochise will call you to trust me. Here. Where is somebody you got that from Bob Hobart? The young fellow who tried to escape the attack. That means he's dead and the Cheyenne sent you... Why would I come here alone if I were with the Cheyenne, Mr. Gold? Well, he knows your name, Dad. Yes, Bob Hobart described your father to me. Bob, is he all right? He got through with a slight arm wound. He went with a friend of mine to the village of Cochise. He still carries the eagle feathers Cochise gave you, Mr. Gold. If you look closely, you see that these feathers are differently marked and bound with wampum. Yours are bound together with thongs. He's right, Dad. These aren't the same feathers. In that case, you were a friend of Cochise. Yes, that's right. I came to give what help I can until the Apaches arrive. Hold on, Mr. Gold. I remember hearing about a masked man who rides a big white stallion and helps keep law and order. Yeah, I've heard of him, too. It's... You must be that hombre. That's right. Here they come again. Get to your post, men. Glad to have your help, mister. Let's get busy. Hold your fire until they're riding close. With this place. Get down, Susan. Again, the Cheyenne circled in the attack. Many of them fell and several pioneers were wounded. Then, as before, the savages withdrew for a short time. A long period of tense waiting passed before the Cheyennes again appeared. This time, their numbers had increased, and they moved in with even greater ferocity than before. This time, they continued the attack without let-up. The Lone Ranger, moving from group to group, gave advice and encouragement, while his guns blazed continuously. Life. That mask hombre is worth a dozen men. And he makes every shot count. I never saw anyone to match him. Man alive, look, more of them. Hundreds of them coming from all sides. Those are Apaches. Oh, Jesus, and his braves are here. Tell your men to hold their fire. Well, let's see. Hold your fire. The Apache braves closed in, and the Cheyennes, realizing they were far outnumbered, tried to escape. For a short time, they fought back, but Cochise and his braves soon subdued them. The Cheyennes, disarmed and unmounted, huddled together within a large circle of Apaches. The Lone Ranger, with Silas Galt, Susan, and a few of the pioneers, rode to meet the great chieftain, Cochise. Oh, 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 oh. Ow, ow, Cochise. Cochise, bring braves quick to stop Cheyenne jackals who attack white friends. I knew you'd come, Cochise. We're mighty thankful to you. You sure proved your friendship for us, Cochise. We... Hey, look. Hobart's with Cochise. And Slade and Stacy behind him. Ah, young white fella, plenty brave. Me watch him fighting Cheyenne like real warriors. Well, I'll be doggone. We find other two pale faces in Grove with Chief Black Bear Cheyenne. Black Bear say... Them promise many rifles to Cheyenne if them attack. Oh, that's it, eh? Huh? They got those Cheyennes to attack us. Apache braves want to take prisoners to village. Punish them by Indian law. Hey, no, don't. Don't let them take us to their village. They torture us. It was Slade's plan. He promised a man named Diego to stop you. The Mexican was going to supply rifles to the Cheyennes in return for making the attack. Diego, eh? Huh? You'd buy a fender up before charges against him when I get to Santa Fe? Oh, Chief, listen. Uh, me listen to words of wisdom from masked friends. If you wish to have these soldier leaders as your friends, take the Cheyennes to the reservation at Ben's Fort and report the facts. They will be punished. Let Mr. Gold take the two white prisoners under guard to the nearest army post. Ah. Oh, Chief, listen. You have my word, Cheyennes be taken to reservation. Pale faces be taken to my friend Gull. Hello, Bob. Come here, will you? Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, 
<laughs> Mr. Galt, I understand you and your men have called Bob Hobart a coward. I think he's the most courageous coward I ever hope to meet. I think Bob is wonderful. Do you, Susan? Uh, well, you can uh, you can tell by looking at her that she does, Hobart. I, I want to apologize for me and the men for thinking of you as we did. Well, that's all right, Mr. Galt. I, I was plenty scared of Indians. But I didn't know there were, well, good Indians like Chief Cochise and his braves. Indians are people like the rest of us, Bob. They are good and bad, just as you'll find among us. Cochise, proud of his people and proud to be friends to good white men. We go now. Take Cheyenne to reservation. Adios. Adios, Cochise. We'll see that Slade and his partner are taken care of, mister. Good. I don't know. I'll go on to Fort Dodge now. Goodbye, and good luck, Bob. Goodbye, sir. Adios, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, Bob, I'm so glad you're back safe and sound. <laughs> well, I reckon someday I'll have a business partner. If Bob has enough courage left, he will talk himself into the family. Dad. I, <laughs> I'll do my best, Mr. Gold. Yeah. Uh, meeting that masked man gave me courage enough for anything. You know, by Thunder, he's the one who could do it. I sure would like to know who he is. His Indian friend Tonto told me. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll still copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time. <laughs>